Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through system testing. So basically, in one of our lectures, we have discussed the introduction to system testing, right? I hope few of you remember it. I do agree with that. So let us discuss a small introduction about this about system testing again. So basically, system testing is nothing but from the name itself, we can say it is the testing of the complete system or a huge system. So here, the final product after integrating everything so your final application or product you'll be testing it guys so that is nothing but testing system testing in simple words okay okay so system testing is a level of testing that validates the complete and fully integrated software product so that is your end product guys so that we will be testing now so that is nothing but system testing okay the purpose of the system testing is you evaluate the end to end system specifications okay okay so sorry so assume that you have designed a software that works with a minimum of 4 gb ram and it takes around 50 mb of memory space like in your hard disk so it requires a disk space of 50 mb so and it requires a minimum ram of a 4 gb so you you are giving the specifications right so now assume that your user is not having this so then what will be happening or if you your if your user is having more than that what will happen so it will, it can accommodate if it is more but if it is less there could be some issues right so you need to enhance them you need to check all those issues like end to end user how the user will be interacting with them will he face some lag will he face some issues and everything you will be analyzing here guys so the purpose of the system testing is to evaluate the end to end system specification so end to end is nothing but usage of all modules till end like a customer so assume that you are a customer and you'll be doing this testing guys okay so now let us go through types of recovery testing okay okay so it ensures that the system must recover from fault so these are the few conditions guys which you should follow like whenever you are planning for recovery testing you will be following these things okay okay so ensure that the system must recover from the faults and resume the process with a little or no downtime okay so basically whenever you are designing an application the response time of it should be really fast and the recovery time also should be fast guys so you cannot say that our server or our website will never go down it does go down guys i do agree for that right so there are multiple times when it goes down but our requirement is that it should be done in a limited time like around 30 minutes or 40 minutes like because our website does not get a lot of traffic so there will be no issues even it is down for some time but when it comes to youtube or facebook these kind of big big company websites they should be back live in few minutes or seconds also guys yes okay so you should ensure the recovery recoverment of any kind of issues so any processing faults should not bring down the entire system so assume that you are posting something in facebook guys so only posting is not working so okay you inform your friend that posting is not working i am unable to post my picture so if you ask him so his Facebook is also working fine, but only posting is not working. Okay, so this could not be a small issue. So this could be a small issue, right? Yes. But if the whole Facebook is not working, will that be a big issue? Yes. So that is the reason why it should not affect other component. So if that is affected, okay, let it affect. But it should not affect the entire system or it should not bring down the entire system. Okay. Software must recover from faults and resume normally within a specific period of time. In a limited time, that's it okay so similarly we are having security testing guys these are just some small small terms that's the reason why i'm discussing them in this lecture only okay security testing so security testing is nothing but you will be checking your verification you will be verifying your system right whether it is secured whether there is any any loopholes or anything you'll be checking right so verifying that the protection of me protection mechanism built into the system will actually protect the protect from attacks so whenever you are designing an application you always check about security guys because security is the most important concern okay so the after that it is nothing but stress testing so it executes the system in a manner that demands resources in an abnormal way so basically assume you are using an application and initially it requested in the first few seconds it requested for 1 MB of main memory and after that it suddenly jumped to 1 GB after that it suddenly jumped to 8 GB your memory is only 8 GB so it is occupying the whole GB so these kind of abnormal things can lead to the crash of the operating system or the software so that is the reason why you need to test this also what will happen if there is excessive changes in the memory or database requests or the user members the number of users okay 
okay similarly you will also do the doing the performance testing so the aim at this testing is to run the performance of the software it is done due, done through throughout the system phase so basically whenever you are doing sdlc in every phase you will be doing this performance testing guys you know how your project is performing right in that way okay so here you will be considering mostly about speed and time okay so i hope everyone got some basic idea about the different types of basic testings and we also discussed about system testing okay so in the next lecture we will be introducing about what is basically debugging guys so everyone most of us will be con confusing between testing and debugging so both are completely different guys we will be discussing about that in the next lecture okay so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching